I got my drink. It's not alcohol, okay? Cheers! This is a probiotic drink. It's so good. How do you stay confident? So I have a whole video dedicated on how to be confident. But I would basically say that. But anyone who tells you that your physical appearance doesn't matter in being confident is a freaking liar. You have to be able to love yourself and how you look physically. And if this is something you can change, like... If you want to lose weight, if you want to gain weight, anything that you want to do with your appearance, if you want to clear your acne, if you want to, you know, just certain things, cosmetic surgery, anything like that, that will definitely help with your confidence. It does help with feeling like you look better physically. Of course, internally also matters. It matters um, how you feel about yourself. Anyone who tells you your outside appearance doesn't is a freaking liar. I'm just putting on this Pure Clay mask by L'Oreal. I love this mask, you guys. But basically, how to be confident, you have to go through a really tough time in your life. Like, the way that I gained confidence was being like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Like, I'm not going to let anybody change the way I feel about myself because they got issues. Usually, when people are being rude to you... And, you know, when people are putting you down, it's because their own problems. And that has nothing to do with you. Thank God it has nothing to do with you. But usually it's their own problems. It's their issues. It has nothing to do with you. But loving yourself, it's a journey. You know, you fall in and out of love with yourself. But you have to have that sense of self-worth. And that's another question I got. It was like, how do you develop your self-worth? And honestly, you have to prove to yourself that you're worthy. I know that kind of sounds weird, but that is how I gained my confidence. You have to do little things and achieve little milestones that you set for yourself to be like, wow, I really did that. Like... I shocked myself and I did something that I've always wanted to do but I never thought that I could do. Now with the body image, um, I would definitely say that it's crazy because on social media, yes you see all of these girls with hourglass figures, um, really skinny stomachs and just wide hips and things like that but it's crazy because people tend to forget the average person does not look like that like when you put your phone away and I have a video on um, me deleting social media for a year when you put your phone away and you don't use social media and you don't get on um, Instagram and you don't look at these influencers or whatever people are shaped normally even when you go and you watch a movie or you watch a show they're shaped very nor like your average person like they're shaped like the person that you would see on an average day-to-day -day basis so i would say realize that social media body image and the perfect body on social media is not attainable for everybody like those wide hips that people be having and stuff a lot of them do get surgery which isn't to downplay their beauty but it is the truth um like with enough money you could look like anybody <laughs> and that's just the truth and people are beautiful in every single shape and size you are beautiful but again if you do want to change something about yourself and you feel like it would make you more confident if you want to gain some weight or if you want to lose some weight or anything like that and you feel like it would make you feel more confident do it like who's to say that you can't do that for the sake of yourself and your mental health like nobody should say that to you I look like a smurf. Another question is, how do you stay disciplined to do the things that you do? I'm a 
I'm gonna be real with y'all. I used to be a so lazy. I'm so serious. I used to be a really, really lazy person. And I think that was also because I was never doing anything that I wanted to do. Everything. Oh my God. I need this. Oh, oh, I almost dropped it. It's so good. The person that I am now is not the person I was last year. I have a lot of drive. Like, I can do so many things in one day. It's crazy. My biggest tip for getting a lot of discipline in the things that you need. Hopefully, I'm not getting this on my white ass robe. My biggest thing is you need to pay attention to your end goal. Why are you doing this right now? You need to be reminding yourself, for example, with school. I hate school. School is so annoying and I cannot wait to graduate. <clears throat> but the reason why I'm in school is for a reason because I'm going to get my degree. And I just have to keep reminding and telling myself, you only have a couple of more semesters. When you get the degree, everything will be worth it. That is your goal stay focused like you have a goal so stay focused so reminding yourself of that and just you know i'm a very tunnel vision type of person but i feel like you can only get that way when you truly know what you want to do in your life and some of the goals that you have for yourself you have to be very specific on okay what kind of steps do i need to take to reach that goal even baby steps like even passing a class is really important Passing one class is important for me to get my degree, so you got to take that one class seriously. People also need to get used to the fact that not everything is going to be in your comfort zone. Not everything's going to be easy breezy. Not everything is going to be easy to get to your big picture goal. Sometimes you got to suffer. Sometimes you have to do things that you don't feel like doing. Sometimes you have to wake up at 3 a.m. to study for your test. Sometimes you have to get up every day at 6 a.m. to get started with your day. If you have a very specific goal and you're not doing that, there's somebody else in the world who is doing exactly that they're taking their goals serious and they're going to be at the point you've always wanted to be at but you're not going to get to that point just because you don't have enough discipline and they do which person do you want to be okay Now, let's talk about fake friends. I've had some friends that I have cut off. And it's whatever, like, the friendship didn't work. I wouldn't call them fake friends. I would more so call them friends that weren't for me. Um, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. I feel like the best way, my ring light, I feel like the best way to deal with fake friends is not to. Don't talk to them. Don't follow them on social media. Stop looking at their posts. Stop trying to figure out if they're throwing subtweets. Um, don't text them. Don't answer their texts. None of that because all of that drama is for the birds. I don't like drama and you shouldn't either because we're not children. And... We're too grown for that. That is how you deal with fake friends. Don't. Anyways, so I ran a bubble bath. So excited to get in it. This girl talk is going to be very unprofessional. Just because I am going to be doing my toes and I'm going to get ready for bed while I do this girl talk. So if you guys like this girl talk or if you don't, let me know in the comments. It's just that I'm just so busy with exams and I want to go ahead and just, you know, kill some birds with some stones and record while I'm doing other stuff. It's just easier for me. So one of the questions you guys ask me and one of the comments that I do keep getting are like girls, you know, telling me that they don't feel comfortable going up to their mom and they're just asking, you know, how do I go up to my mom to talk about things like this? Honestly, I would say that it's not something you can really force. Like sometimes you can try if you want to, but if your mom is, you know, a bit older, they may feel uncomfortable talking about things like this. Um, I would honestly suggest to wait until you go to college because honestly, like your dynamic, your relationship dynamic with your mother changes 
as you get older. Like, you're not going to be treated as a child anymore, especially if you go out of state for college. Like, for me, for example, I am from Texas, and I moved to Florida to go to school out here. And um, I would definitely say that my dynamic with my parents shifted because they saw that I could handle independence, and they've seen that, like, I've grown as a woman. So it kind of takes your mom seeing you mature and grow and like not seeing you as a little girl anymore because you're not a little girl anymore and it'll take time like don't force it it will definitely happen the next question that i'm answering is how do you get rid of itchiness in your area um i'm sorry if you hear noise those are my cats playing with their toys so the reason why you have itchiness is because your razor is too dull or it's because you're using products that cause an allergic reaction so for example the shaving cream that you use you could be allergic to it the shaving cream that you're using you could be allergic to it or um, an oil that you're using could be causing itchiness so you just want to make sure, because the first thing obviously is probably because your razor is dual. I think I'm just going to paint my nails white just because I ain't got no other colors that I want to paint it and white is pretty standard. So how do you know if a guy is the guy for you? I would honestly say that it depends. Like. A lot of times as women or people, you can be a man, but a lot of times we have to experience a lot of people to see kind of what we want um, in a partner because truthfully you don't really know what you want until you have it. A lot of people can say they prefer somebody who is um, a very specific type of way, like they would say, oh I prefer somebody who is smarter than me, but then they get with somebody who is smarter than them and they feel inferior. So it's really important to really experience what you say that you like to see if you really like it. Because a lot of times what we're really drawn to is what we're familiar with. So it's important to experience different people, different flavors, especially if you're young, and just see what's out there. Like see what you like, see what you don't like. Um, I would definitely say one of the standards of knowing a guy is for you is if he's very supportive if he um, inspires you, if you admire him, if you will be able to say, yes, I would like to be like him or I would like my child to be like him. You know, if you can say things like that, that is a really good sign to see if a guy is for you. If you guys have very good communication, if, you know, it doesn't turn toxic when you guys get into arguments or fight, you guys know how to talk through it with each other you guys know how to kind of adapt with each other with different times because if you're somebody who definitely is a long-term relationship kind of person you want to make sure that this person is able to be with you throughout different times of your life so a lot of times you won't be able to know if somebody is for you until you have endured different seasons with them you have to have been with them for a long time to really know because you don't know, you know, and even seven years down the line, you could go through a very traumatic or new experience in your life. It could be extremely amazing. It could be extremely traumatic. But are they still with you during that time? And do they adapt and change with you? That's really, really important when it comes to relationship withstanding. Somebody asked about long distance relationships and long distance relationships 100% can work. But it takes really mature people. I don't want you guys to ever think that your relationship could never work. Any relationship can work. It doesn't matter your zodiac sign. It doesn't matter your location. What matters is if you guys are determined to make it work together. It can't just be one person who wants to make it work. It has to be both people. So if both, the both of you aren't coming together as partners then no, it's not gonna work. But if both of you are, you know, trying together, you guys are communicating often, long distance relationships, it's a lot different because as human beings, we crave that physical contact and that's just very natural for us. So obviously long distance relationships are different in that sense, but I don't ever want you guys to feel like just because it's different, it means that it can't work. 
Because if you think that your soulmate and the person that you're supposed to be with, except we have a lot of soulmates, but if you think that the person that you're going to marry is like five miles away from you, yeah, that could be true for some people. But a lot of times you could find a better soulmate in another state. So it's like, I don't know, I feel like it's so important for young women to experiment and to just see what's out there for them. Don't limit yourself to people who are just around you. Does it hurt to break your virginity? Um, I, I don't know. Okay, so basically it feels different for different girls. Sometimes it will hurt. Other times it'll just be a pressure. Um, it depends if your hymen is already broken. But a lot of times, it doesn't hurt, like it's not like you're going to be crying. It just feels like pressure. Um, and after that, like after you've done it for a few times with your person, it's not going to feel, it's not going to be painful anymore. If it is, you definitely need to go to the doctor, go to your gyno. But yeah, it will hurt, but like is it hurting? I don't know, I have tattoos and I have piercings, so what is really pain? You know what I mean? So somebody asked, why should you not tolerate cheating in a relationship and should you block somebody who has cheated on you on social media? So this may be an unpopular opinion, but some couples, a lot of older couples, can make it work after they have been cheated on. It's up to you. Me personally, I can't make it work with somebody who has cheated on me before. It's never happened to me. Um, that I know of but I couldn't make it work just because when somebody cheats on you it does feel it makes you feel inferior and it makes you feel like you have no value and for me that's really hard for me to get past but with therapy um, and marriage counseling this is for older people you can make it work with um, a partner who's cheated on you before by seeing that they've changed their behavior and proof of it it's not for everybody to work through it and if you have worked through it you know you're a really strong woman but yeah that's basically the reason why cheating really hurts in a relationship it makes you feel like you have no value and somebody shouldn't make you feel like that in a way especially if you've been cheated on before and you disclose with your partner that that's happened and they do it anyways it just feels very very crushing now, should you block somebody on social media who has cheated on you? It's up to you if you want to do that. Me personally, I would probably do that. <laughs> but it is up to you. Um, I feel like I'll block anybody who has upset me, which is something I need to work on. But I don't know. That's up to you if you would want to do that. Toxic relationships, how do you know if a relationship is toxic? There are a lot of signs that a relationship is toxic. I would say the biggest sign a relationship is toxic is you feel like you cannot live without that person. You know that feeling that you have where it, honestly, it's not even love. It's infatuation, but it's like that burning infatuation to where you need to talk to them all the time. You need to talk to them all day. You feel like you can't stop thinking about them. You feel like anytime they, you know, don't text you back fast enough or they do a little thing to upset you, it feels like your whole entire world is crashing down. Just very dramatic up and down roller coaster emotions. That's kind of one of the identifying features of a toxic relationship it can get toxic really fast after that depending on how you guys steer the situation if you guys are younger that's very common with younger people to feel that but as you grow older and as you've experienced a lot of relationships you don't really crave a whole bunch of passion like for me for example it's more so stability and security i want somebody who makes me feel like I'm at home, a very homey type of love, not really a fiery, passionate, because I've had that before. I've had that when I was younger, and now that I'm growing older, you want something more stable, and it's it's more important for you to have that best friend connection with your partner instead of a first love kind of love. Yeah, that's fun, but I'm a Taurus moon, so <laughs> I like that very homey, 
stable type of partnership but if you find yourself cutting off friends you find yourself being told that you're acting different um, things like that that can show that you're kind of entering that toxic stage of a relationship now that's not to say that you need to immediately break up with the person unpopular opinion again you can make a toxic relationship healthy if both people want to do it and if both of you are very mature in your communication style and your growth as people because if you're younger and you're growing with this person there's gonna be a toxic phase with that person the longer you're together the more phases you go through with them you can turn a toxic relationship around again with therapy with communication with revisiting past traumas and healing it can happen but that is it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed this is like a vlog style I don't what this is but if you guys enjoyed give me a thumbs up and let me know down below in the comments if you like this way of doing a girl talk i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys in my next one bye